God. How are we going to do this thing? What, how, how are we going to do it? Uh, let, let's look at God's plan for uh, spreading the gospel around the world. God's got a plan. Do you believe that? God's got a plan. God has always had a plan, and God does it his way. And, it, and when we decide to do it God's way, uh, we see fruit. I mean, my goodness, we've already seen an altar ministry before the worship got done. Wasn't that powerful? I mean, God's on the move in this place, and I'm excited at what God's doing. Every Christian ought to be thoroughly familiar with the great missionary command that runs through the, uh, both the Old and the New Testaments. Uh, you know, uh, in, in Matthew 28, uh, I just want to read it to you real quick. Matthew 28, uh, verses about, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there. So just put it right up there. It's a kumbuing where, yes, drum roll, please. And it's coming. Matthew 28. Yes. Then the 11 disciples went away to Galilee to a mountain where Jesus told them where to go. And when he saw them, they worshiped him. But yet some doubted. Can you believe that? You're always going to have doubters. I mean, you can see him crucified, buried, and resurrected. And still the devil makes fools of people. Still. And some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority is given unto me. Now all authority, all power, all right. It's mine now. I took away death, uh, the keys to the, uh, of the king. I, I took, I, I'm victorious over death, hell, and the grave. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, everywhere, everywhere. Wh whether they look like you, sound like you, talk like you or not, they, maybe their diet's different than yours. doesn't matter. All people, because all people are created by God. All people. We all go back to Adam and Eve. Or, or bring it on up close, more closely. We all come from Noah and Mrs. Noah. Okay? We all do. And he says, go and, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then, you, okay, you get them, convert them, get them baptized, and disciple them. Educate them. Uh, teach him to observe all things I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And I believe that, don't you? And, and so there Jesus told us what to do. He told us what to do. These words were spoken by the Lord himself. And it's his divine plan uh, to getting the gospel out to everyone. This was his parting command to his followers. The last thing he said was, go. As you go, proclaim. This is the last thing he said, and it's related to this present dispensation of grace in which we are living. It's a now thing that we're to do. And therefore, it is just as binding today as it was on those who stood there and literally heard what he had to say and watch him go up, literally go up into the clouds and received him out of, out of his sight, out of their sight. It's just as valid today, but too often we don't believe that. We don't believe it. Or we might give a mental assent to it, but we don't practice it. We don't get involved. But how slow God's people are to obey. We need a vision for all the world and all of creation. In Pakistan and in Cuba and in, in the Gambia. And, and you just fill in the blank. In Europe, my goodness, Europe has become a wasteland, especially Western Europe, when they've let all their borders down and let all those Islamic refugees come in. And now the rape, the rape rate has, has gone up 500%. Because in a Muslim's mind, it's not sin to rape a non-Muslim. Do you understand that? That's not sin. That's not sin. Matter of fact, in, in their book, it's taught it is their right because they, are, they feel they're superior, and you are inferior. Do you understand that? God, open our eyes to the truth. God, open our eyes to the way it really is. Well, first thing I want us to look at real quickly here is the plan for preaching the gospel to every creature is the Lord's plan. God's love extends to all of mankind. Do you believe that today? I mean, everyone. He loves everyone. Even, even radical Islamists. 
My goodness, do you realize more Muslims have gotten saved in the last 50 years than the four, four, first 1,400 years of Islam? God is doing something marvelous. God is, I mean, he's, he's appearing to them in dreams and visions and, 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 and with the advent of the Internet and very sundry ways, and these little thumb drives and all this Wi-Fi thing and all that stuff. God, the people of God are getting the word in and in their language, whether it's Farsi or Urdu or, or Punjabi or, or Hindi or it doesn't matter. In Mandarin and Cantonese, he's getting the word in in Tibet. Uh, everywhere, you know, uh, we hear all free Tibet. You know, Tibet, Tibet is, uh, you know, it is a province of China today. And, they, and people say, oh, we need to free Tibet. You know, they've been in bondage for thousands of years because they believed the lie of Buddhism. Do you understand? And they would not allow any Christians to come in. At least under communist China, we're getting missionaries into Tibet. You know, praise God. You go figure that one out. You know, you see these bumper stickers, free Tibet. Well, let's free them from sin and hell. And let's get the gospel out to them. Amen? Amen. And, so, and so God's love extends to everyone. You know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Woo! That's me and you. That's everyone. And, I, and I'm, I'm so happy that that's the way it is. And, 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 and you know... Uh, Oh, in Isaiah 45, 2, 22, Isaiah 45, 22, look unto me and be saved, all ye the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth, that means everyone can be saved. Not everyone will be saved, but everyone could be saved. I believe that. It's an offer to whosoever will may come. John 10, 13, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you a whoever? Then if you call, you can get saved. Oh, my goodness. He says, I, for I am God and there is no other. You see, the church of every generation is commissioned by Jesus Christ to evangelize the world in its generation. You know, some of us are getting a little, we're closer to the end than we are the beginning. And I'm telling you, what we do, we need to do now. I believe the rapture of the church is just so close. You know, well, what if it's next year? Oh, that's close. <laughs> That's close. Well, what, what if it's in 2020? We'll vote and go. I mean, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it, it just, it, I mean, that's close. I don't know when it is. I don't know the hour of the day, but I'm telling you, boy, everything is just shaping up like it's right at the door. To evangelize the world is, is, uh, the, is to present Jesus Christ as the only Savior and divine Lord. That he's the only way to the Father. No one can come to the Father except through him. And that every human being will have a fair opportunity to intelligently accept him. You see, God has put in us, every human being, he's created an awareness that there is a God, that there is a creator, that there, there has to be a reconciliation, and that there is going to be a coming judgment for that person. Uh, everyone, everyone, everyone has that put in them by a loving God and a loving Father. I get these arguments from people, you know, all the time. I can remember way back when I first went to Bible college and I'd be out witnessing and, uh, on, a, um, on a Saturday uh, working our, the bus route that I was part of. And inevitably someone says, well, now what about that pygmy up the Congo River that never seen a white man or never seen a TV or never seen any. What, what, what about them? I said, they have in them the same thing you had in you. A realization that there is a creator, that their reconciliation must take place, and there is a judgment to attend. God loves us. Now, he's commissioned us who know him to take the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is the king. It's his kingdom. You know, he's the king, we're the dumb. Domain. Okay. And we're to take the message of the king far and wide to your next door neighbor across the street down to the, the homeowners association. Or if you're not cursed with one of those... 
uh, wherever you go. <laughs> okay, here's shovel. All right, number two, the responsibility for preaching the gospel to every creature is upon every Christian. Do you understand? Every, it, it's upon every Christian. And just like, just like uh, Brother David said, we all are called to this. If you're born again, if you are truly a genuine Bible Christian, we are called to share our faith. We're called to be engaged in the process. It doesn't mean everybody's got to stand up on a platform behind a pulpit somewhere or, and, and preach, but you have a message to share. You have a message to tell. You have something to, that, I mean, what has God done for you? Has he answered your prayers? Of course he has. If you say you haven't, he hadn't answered your prayer, you need to get saved. And boy, he'll start answering right and left. I'm here to tell you, he loves you. He cares for you. The marching orders of Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's just as binding today as it was back then. We see what Paul uh, says about it in, in, uh, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. I hope I gave you that one. 2 Corinthians, that is that God was in Christ. Now, now think about this. The Father is in, God the Father is in God the Son who became a human being, God the Son did, veiled his divine attributes in that he didn't walk about the earth as God. He walked about the earth as a man. He operated as a spirit-filled Christian would today. Do you understand? You know, I saw a joke one time about Jesus and his brothers and sisters, and, and Mary sent him out to play. It says, y'all go fishing. And, and one of the brothers says, let's have a contest. And then the little boy hollered back, Mom, make Jesus quit it. All the fish are coming to him. And make him get off the water. It's not fair. You know, well, you know, that's funny, but that didn't happen. He didn't walk about as God. He didn't, he walked about as, he didn't use his divine attributes in the sense that he could have. But God was in Christ reconciling, reconciling, making peace. Remember, I reckon every, every human being is born with this need. You know, there's someone bigger than me, a creator, a God, whatever you want to call him. That divine providence, as, as it was a common term for God in the day that our country was founded. And there must be reconciliation. There, we are at war. We, are, we, are, we have fallen out. As I can remember as a kid going, growing up, and I hear, if I heard Grandma says, well, they had a fallen out, I knew what that meant. Man, they were some. They were up. They they were they had fallen out. They weren't in fellowship. They had a fallen out. And he said, "The whole world and and everybody knows we've had a fallen out." You see, Adam and Eve caused that falling out, and so he's reconciling the world to himself. And what does that mean? Not imputing their trespasses to them. Well, you say, I'm a pretty good person. You have trespasses. You have broken God's law. You have broken God's law. Have you ever been surprised or excited and said, Jesus, you've taken the Lord's name in vain. You've broken God's law. You have. You have committed trespass. I've heard people say, Christ Almighty. And it wasn't in a reverent, holy, or worshipful way. It was, a, it was a, as a byword. You have broken God's law. You deserve to go to hell forever. Just on that. But the Lord was in Christ. The Father was in Christ. Not imputing your trespasses to yourself. I... I've got them. You do too. But he took them. 
And he's commi- he took him on himself. Remember 2 second, remember second, uh, second Corinthians 5.21 says, For Christ, uh, who knew no sin, was made to be sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He took our trespasses, our iniquity, our, our bent towards. He took it all, and he paid for it on the cross and took his holiness, his righteousness, his purity, and put it to our account. Woo! My goodness. That story, that, that, and he's committed to us. Do you realize that God has committed to you the word of reconciliation? You know what that means? How many people in here are married? Guess what? You're committed to someone. Do you hear me? You're committed. God has committed to us. He has married to us. We are in covenant. Whether you're single or married here today... If you're saved, you are in a covenant relationship. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. It's not, he's not committed to us the role of sin policeman. He's committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. God knows what sin is. We're already condemned. He's calling us unto himself that we can be reconciled. That, that's, that's, how we, that's how you get the, word, the, the, the message done. Immediately we're born into God's family and we're responsible for taking and sharing the message of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to the world. And the question is, are we discharging that responsibility? My goodness. I mean, for some people, it's more important to have their car clean than it is to see somebody get saved. It's more important that, that uh, you know, I mean, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that draws you. My goodness, I, I, you know, for some people, it's more important to go to a Nats baseball game than to be faithful to the house of God. Or a football game. Uh, or, a, or, or, or play golf or fish. or I mean, you know, I mean, I, that's what, those are the things I like to do. Well, I don't like the fishing so much, but everything else, you know. Everything else. They say I don't have enough patience for fishing. I, I just can't understand what that logic. <laughs> Three, the need for preaching the gospel to every creature is very great. It was great when our Lord initiated this wonderful program. For at that time, there was only a handful of Christians. Now you think about it. How few. I mean, he had 12 disciples. And turn the world upside down. The need's far greater today than it was in the day of, of Jesus. The population is so much greater. Finally, finally, for the first time in history, there's more people on earth than any other time. I mean, we're up around 8 billion, and 9 billion's not very far. I mean, boom, boom, boom. And away it goes. And there are more people who need to hear the gospel and be saved. In addition to this, there are many more religions and false cults. There are. There absolutely are. Than they were even 2,000 years ago. But there's still only one gospel. Do you hear me? There's still only one gospel. There's only one. There are millions of people in the world today who have never heard a clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's not God's fault. That's Christian's fault. That's church's fault. That's people who don't see the need of a, an aggressive missions program. That, that, that's for people who stand in the way of people wanting to go on mission trips and criticize them. For, listen, we've got we to get on with God's plan. We've got to get on board with what, the way God said to do it. Amen? You know, I can't, you know, I've never been to Pakistan, but Brother David goes, and we can help him. Do you understand? Do you understand? I mean, we, 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 get, we get thousands of people from Pakistan who watch our archive messages, our video messages. I mean, it's unbelievable how many people are watching us. Little old Greenway, little old 
a little old duck in the big puddle of the northern Shenandoah Valley. But yet tens of thousands of people hear the gospel every week because of faithful people in the pew who bring their tithes and offerings and who pray and who encourage and do not stand in the way of missions. That's God's way of getting it done. You say, oh, I, I, how, do you measure, uh, how do you measure the investment? If you see it as an investment, you need to repent, you black-hearted thing. You don't buy stock in God. Who do you think he is? Who do you really think he is? You know, uh, the little sister, the little sister who, who, who might make $1,000 a month and, and, and puts in her hundred is every bit as big as the person who makes $10,000 a month and puts in his thousand. A tithe is a tithe is a tithe. Can somebody say amen? amen. You don't invest. <laughs> My goodness. It's God's work, God's way. Amen? Amen. Marvel not that you're turning away so soon him had called you in the gospel of, of, of uh, uh, in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. And boy, I'm telling you, the TV's full of this stuff. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Can I tell you that repentance and faith are inseparable? You can't have one without the other. I know many times the Bible just says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and you shall be saved. Well, that's true. Repentance is implied. In other places it says, repent, repent. That means believing is implied. And, and there's different times that it says to repent and believe. Do you understand? If you really come to Christ, if you really become born again, changes begin in your life. Changes begin in your life and your worldview start. And that's why we got to get in the word of God. It will affect your worldview and you'll stop thinking and believing and acting and talking opposite of what God says. Amen. That, that is so true. And so here, there's only one. There's only one. There's only one. The period for preaching the gospel to every creature is limited. Do you understand? We don't have an open-ended opportunity. Our opportunities have limits. You remember where the Lord said in, uh, in John 4, 35, he says, don't say there's four months and there's harvest. He says, look on the fields. They're white in the harvest already. They're ripe. They're, it's, right, it's a right now harvest. A right now harvest. That's why I'm thankful that there's people in this congregation realize, you know, if you, if you realize you need to come to the altar, there's no wrong time to come. Come. There's no wrong time to come. I said there's no wrong time to come. You see, now's the time to obey God. Not later, not tomorrow, not later tonight. Now's the time. And so, and so, it's an out, and listen, this, this, this span of time, the, the word uh, theologically is dispensation. It's a period of time. And we're in a dispensation that is a, uh, the dispensation of the church, where grace is abounding in such amazing richness, unlike any other period. I mean, under the law, you know the law didn't save anybody. Never did. It was just a mirror to show you your dirt. But they had to believe the message that God gave them. You see, it's always been by faith, but now here we are, Jesus, the fulfillment of the Mosaic law. I mean, it was by faith before the law. It was by faith during the law and after, and, and after the fulfillment of the ceremonial law. It is still by faith, by grace through faith. And now it's abounding everywhere and everyone can be a priest. Everyone can be a believer priest. Everyone has a right to go to the Father. Everyone can offer up the sacrifice of praise. You don't have to be at a certain tribe and a certain plan, a certain... I mean, everybody, you see. That's the dispensation we are in. That, that's the one. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You see, I, I, I want you to understand that uh, the time is short. 
The time is short. It's short dispensationally. We don't have a forever time to get it done. It's short because there's, you know, uh, there's a start, you know, the, the day of Pentecost. And when the last person believes on Jesus and the rapture happens, man, that dispensation is over. And then there's going to be another horrendous time of, and those first seven, those seven years called the tribulation period, and then the millennial reign, and and that's gonna, that's a whole another ball of wax. I don't have time to get into, but you see, it it is short, and then it's short. Uh, in James 5, 8, but even if we, an angel of heaven, preach any other gospel to you let, that we have preached, let him be accursed. Mm. Now, James wasn't politically correct. Can I put that in Appalachian English for you? He said, if anybody tells you there's another way to go to heaven, may they be damned to hell. That's what condemned means. You say, oh, that's so harsh. Yeah. Telling people a lie and they believe and they're going to heaven and end up in hell is harsh too. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so he says, be also, be patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. You see, it's short politically for the doors of opportunity for missionary enterprise are fast closing in many lands. It is, you know, uh, things are volatile in Cuba. You just never know. You, I just go, you know, I just go. It's still pretty good. It's all good. It's all good. You know, things are still good in Gambia. And, uh, but uh, they, they've told Americans not to go to Pakistan, <laughs> you know, for obvious reasons. You know, when you stop supporting them financially, it's, uh, that gets people's attention. Do you understand? Just like when you stop supporting the Palestinian Authority, you know, the, that terrorist outfit that, you know, then that gets their attention, you see. Dear friends, I want you to understand. It's short spiritually for hundreds of thousands of souls die daily. Die daily. People, if we had a clock up here that showed you how many people die every day, it's unbelievable how many people leave this world unprepared to meet God. And we can make a difference. That's why we live stream. That's why we support missions. That's why we go on mission trips. That's why we encourage you to share your faith in your community because that's God's way of doing it. Do you hear me? That's how they've done it. Every, that, in the first century, they preached and they demonstrated uh, in power the message of Jesus Christ. Well, methods for preaching the gospel to every creature are varied. With the increase of literacy, and I like what the, Brother David said, we're teaching them. He teaches them how to read and write, you know, teach them a trade, and then teach them about Jesus. Man, that's what you call a well-rounded, well-rounded. I can remember when you could go to the public school in America and get the same thing. Can't now, but I remember when I was a kid growing up, you could. My goodness, we said prayer before we ate in the, in the public school out there. We started every morning with the Pledge of Allegiance and the Lord's Prayer. Try to do that now. My goodness, just try to do it now. You know, all it takes is one phone call to the, to the superintendent's office. And the fear will come in them, whether they're believers or not. All it takes is the ACLU just make one phone call or these, uh, this, this, this uh, Citizens for, for the Freedom from Religion group that sue all these, all these uh, school systems to get them to take Christ out. And, not to, and don't you dare pray at a football game. Don't you dare. Don't dare, coach. You, you let your, don't you join your, your students if they voluntarily want to pray. Don't you dare. We'll fire you. And that's what they've been doing. That's what they've been doing. Oh, friends, what we, time's running out. We've got to do what we do. 
and God open the door and God give wisdom to everyone who works in the education system that they will be a light and they'll be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves and to press, and, and the Lord protect them that they can, 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 can represent Christ in a wonderful way. Well, how can I do this? What are the various methods? Number one, prayer. Say prayer. I'm telling you, that's the greatest weapon we have. Prayer. Prayer. We're told uh, that only the Lord of the harvest can call the laborers into the harvest fields. But we must pray them out. John 4. Uh, the second way is by giving. Every Christian should regularly, systematically, and sacrificially give of his substance so that all the, the mission work may be sustained and extended. That's God's way. You say, I can't go to Tanzania. I can't go to Kazakhstan. I can't go to China. Well, but there are people who are called to go. And we can help. We can pray for them. And we can, that's why, you know, if, if everybody would honestly tithe before the Lord, we'd never have to worry about a dollar again. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? I mean, our, our, missions, our missions budget would quadruple if everybody would honestly tithe. I mean, now you think about that. We give by giving, and then the third way is go yourself. All cannot go in person, but if you love the Lord Jesus, perhaps you can go. And you should be willing to go if he calls you. And, 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 and have you told him of your willingness? Remember Isaiah, here am I, send me. Have you said to the Lord, Lord, I'm willing to go if you want me to go. Have you come to that point in your Christian life? If you want me to go, Lord, I'll go. If you haven't, I challenge you to do it today. Lord, if you want me to go, I'll go. I'm listening, I'll obey. I'm going to pray and I'm going to give. And if you want me to go, I'll go. The reward for preaching the gospel to every creature is very great. The immediate reward is the spatial consciousness of the presence of the Lord Jesus, the joy of soul winning. And there are future rewards that the Bible tells us. There's a soul winner's crown to win, and on and on. And then lastly, as we put down the landing gear, the equipment for preaching the gospel to every creature is promised. Acts 1.8 what do I need? Here's what you need. You shall receive what? Power. Friends, the Holy Spirit is what we need. The power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. The reason, you know the reason most Christians don't, don't think about sharing their faith? They, it, it's, it's not a big deal to miss a day or two or three of reading their Bible. It doesn't bother you not to tithe or just, well, I miss, so I won't have to make it up. Do you know why Christians think that way and commit that sin? Do you know why? You're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I'm telling you, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you, the power to do what's right. The power to obey God. The power to, to witness and to see lost people saved. The power to see the healing. Uh, to see people healed. To see people set free. To, to see shackles broken. People that are in bondage. People that are they're shackled by pornography or drugs or alcohol or, or sexual immorality. Whether it be heterosexual or not. Sin is sin is sin is sin. And God loves us, but God wants us to come to him. Friends, if you receive power, you say, I've not received power. Boy, I tell you, you know, a lot of Christians never received power. They're powerless. Never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They're not spirit-filled. They're not, they're not, I'm telling you, you need to make a difference, and you need to want to change, and you need to make a change. Yes, I know the Holy Spirit comes in the moment you trust Christ as your Savior. And you're born again in your spirit, and you are sealed for the day of redemption. That's what the Bible says. You don't like it, take it up with God. Had a fellow ask me the other day, you know how many authors of the Bible there are? I said, yes, I do. 
There's 39 or 40, depending whether you think Paul wrote Hebrews or not. I said, you're absolutely wrong. There's only one author of the Bible. There's only one. God authored the Bible. He might have used 39 or 40 different human beings, but only God, there's only one author of the Word of God, and it's God-breathed, it's inspired, it's inerrant, and, and it's infallible, and we can believe what God says. And he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll witness. You'll witness. Can you throw up there uh, Mark 16, about verse 15 for me? He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Does that leave anybody out? He says in verse 16, He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he who does not believe shall be condemned. Now, I know that there's baptismal regenerationists who use this. Uh, go back to 16, please. As to say, well, you got to get water baptized go to heaven. No, that's not what that's saying. That's not what that's saying at all. Because he says, the person who doesn't believe is condemned. Okay? Non-believers. Non-believers will be damned. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know that's straightforward, but, you know, condemned. A lot of people don't understand what that means. You see, believing is the common denominator. What's the first step for a believer, a genuine believer? Get water baptized. Get immersed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You mean if I'm not immersed, I can't go to heaven? I never said that. Never said that. I don't believe in baptismal regeneration. You don't get saved in the baptistry. But I'm telling you, it's an answer of a good conscience toward God. And he says, who, he who believes in baptized will be saved. He does not believe, is condemned. Now look here. Now look. And these signs will follow those who believe. Well, how can that happen? Friends, you've got to be spirit-filled. He says, in my name, they'll cast out demons. I'm telling you, there's demons. There's some here today because I can feel them. There's demons here today, and God wants to cast them out. He says, in my name, they'll cast out demons, and they'll speak with new tongues. Some people here have never gotten your prayer language. Well, I'm telling you, that's your secret weapon. It's the only spiritual gift that God has given that's just for you. Do you hear me? It's just for you. I've had people, these cessationists who don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit anymore, they say, oh, well, 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 well praying in, in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, that's selfish. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. Hallelujah. It's the only one of the spiritual gifts that God gave for you that you can encourage yourself and be built up in the most holy faith. I'm telling you, there's times that's all I can do. I don't know how to pray. I just pray in the Spirit. There's times that the devil comes against me, that, 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 and, and I'm telling you, uh, and all I knew to do was to pray in the Spirit. I didn't know what to do. When, when the enemy uses people and situations against you and, 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 and just all, you just fill in the blanks, all, all, I knew, all, I need, needed, all I knew to do was pray in the Spirit. And God, I'm telling you, God is faithful. And he comes through. He says, now look here. Verse 18. Now, don't get excited. We don't have rattlesnakes back here in this box. They'll take up serpents, and they drink anything deadly. No man heat you. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they recover. Serpents. Who are serpents? Do you know who the first serpent was of note? In the garden. His name was Lucifer. He became Satan. Do you understand? This is, this is talking about demonic activity. I'm not saying go out here and pick up a copperhead. You know, I've seen people do that, not on, on film. Listen, if they brought snakes in here, I'm looking for the exit. <laughs> and if no one's in the way, I'm going to start firing bullets. <laughs> do, do you understand? Well, I'm not, I'm not picking up. No, that's not what that's talking about. You see, listen, we're speaking against demonic activity. And if they drink anything deadly... Boy, there's a lot of people around here have been drinking deadly stuff. I'm telling you, be careful what you drink. Be careful. Uh, be careful of the spiritual garbage you drink in. Be careful. 
by no means to hurt you, and they'll lay hands on the sick. Have you ever done that? Lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That's for every Christian. Every Christian. If you're here and you're born again, that's for you. That's how we're going to get the gospel out. You need to be spirit-filled. You need to be spirit-filled. You say, what's the purpose of, of, of uh, miracles, signs, and wonders? Well, what's a miracle? A miracle is when God does something that circumvents the natural laws of physics. Do you understand? I mean, it just circumvents it. Just circumvents it. One time in my life, I saw a crooked leg go straight and come out the same length as the other leg. Now, that was a miracle. It circumvented the natural laws of physics. <sighs> Do you understand? That's a miracle. That's a miracle. You, you know what circumvents the natural laws of physics? A dirty, rotten, hell-deserving sinner being made clean and getting saved. Amen. The miracle of the new birth. Oh, wow. Oh, what, what's a wonder? It's something magnificent that will get your attention and make you wonder. It's a billboard for Jesus. Do you understand? Oh, what's a sign for? Well, what do signs do? They point in a direction. You know, you come up to the sign, and, uh, you know, we're coming, we were, we, were, we were up a ways, you know, and we were coming down the road, and it said, you know, we're going, and, and, and we come to this road, and it said, Winchester that way, and Harrisburg that way. Well, it pointed the direction. That's what signs are for, right. to give you direction. Duh. That's what a sign is for. And he says, So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And then, what they do? What I'm encouraging you to do. And they went out and preached everywhere. Oh, I'm not going, that's the wrong part of town. Now, wait a minute. The wrong, Jesus died for the wrong part of town. Oh, well, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're, they're not my social economic class. Well, boo-hoo. I guess I'll, I'll pray that God cuts your income so you'll feel more at home. <laughs> How many wants to volunteer for that? I mean, now, come on. They went everywhere. They preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them. You see, you don't go, ha I don't have to go in the power of Bob. I go in him. And he says, and they went out and preached everywhere and the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. If you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. And if you get saved, watch your house get saved. I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn. Lord, you make a, you make a road in the desert. You make a river come right down through here so we can put our faith boat out in it and we'll follow the river. The accompanying signs. Lord, what I'm to do? Where am I going? Hey, watch out. Here comes a sign. Winchester's that way. Do you understand? You've got to be willing to say, I'll go. I'll be a witness. You might not ever leave the boundaries of America. I'm telling you, there's plenty of mission work to do right here. But maybe you need to travel overseas. I find that most Americans, when they go to another country, they realize how exceptional America is. America is not normal. This is not normal, the way we live. The abundance, the abounding blessings. I mean, you know, in, in the first year of President Trump's administration, he has set so many, there's so many records have been set. The lowest unemployment in 17 years, the lowest black unemployment ever in the history of America. 
I mean, you won't hear it if you're listening to a lot of the news outlets. But I mean, there, I mean, you got sheets of accomplishments, sheets of paper of accomplishments. And you think, he's no politician. He's got a New York City attitude. And he's not polished. And, you know, but uh, he's, he's a little gruff. And if you hit him, he's going to hit back and he's going to hit you harder. And he's not a politician. And I guess all we can say is, thank God. <laughs> thank God. And so many wonderful things. He's the most pro-life president ever. More judges, more circuit judges. He's put more judges in one year on the bench. They've been open for all, and, the, and all the other presidents just kind of twiddled their thumb and didn't make it a high priority. I'm telling you, God's on the move. It has nothing to do with politics. That's a spiritual issue, what God's doing. It's not Democrat or Republican. It's Jesus. I'm a Jesus crat. Amen. I want to go back to the verse that my brother started in, in uh, Psalm 11, 3, I believe it was. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can they do? First thing, the first paramount thing in your mind is this. Are you saved? Are you absolutely sure? If you're not, let's get sure this morning. Are you saved? And uh, listen, every day I ask the Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Do you go, th do you go through the day and never ask God to fill you with your, His Spirit? Well, why do I need to do that? Will you either work Him off or you leak off? One or the other. One or the other. See, the Holy Spirit ebbs and flows. Listen, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, but the anointing can be removed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Dear friends, are you saved? Are you spirit-filled? Are you available? Availability. I love the way, I love the way over in South Asia, you know, part of, they were part of the British Empire. And, and, and I love the way they, they, they give a W sound to the letter V. Availability. I love you. <laughs> Are you saved? Are you spirit-filled? Are you available? That's how we're going to get the job done. If you're saved, never been baptized, you know you need to take care of that. You need to take care of that. If you're saved and you're not, you're, you're a little, little stingy and hoardy with your finances and you're not worshiping the way the Lord says, listen, you need to commit that to the Lord. I'm not going to send you a letter and say, you're not tithing according to our records. I'm not going to do that. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not the Holy Spirit. But if He lives in you, He'll speak to you.